Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we're back with another Cert Master Life and Security Fund 701. This lab here is going to be all about using playbooks. What is a playbook? Well, let's go and find out. We're going to go ahead, and here is, so playbook, what is that? It's just a step-by-step -step process in order to accomplish a certain task. Usually a step-by-step -step process to resolve an incident, an event, some type of security incident. Right here, these are the. This is our playbook that we're going to go through for this lab. We're going to investigate the high PC, high CPU usage. We're going to terminate the offending process, hash the file, perform an online malware analysis to check out that hash to see if it's actually suspicious. Determine the owner, archive the sus suspicious file for for later use. We're going to copy the zip file to a quarantine system, remove the suspicious file from the affected system. Then we're going to fill out our report. This is what a playbook is, right? This is an example of a playbook, step-by-step -step process on how to accomplish a given task. All right, first things first, we're gonna log into PC10. We're gonna control alt delete. Now there are different ways we can go through this playbook. You'll see that in a, in a few, there are different options that we can select, all right? So you can always go back and do this lab over and over and over and try out the different options. All right, so first, and, and you'll see what, I, what I'm referring to in a minute. I'm gonna open up PowerShell. Doesn't look like we need to open it up as an administrator, but we're gonna type in this command. Let that run. All right, cool. Now we don't need this PowerShell anymore. We have something running. All right, let's go to the next section, right? That PowerShell script actually executed something. We're about to check that out right now. So the first part of the playbook, step one. As I mentioned, there are different options we can use to go through this playbook. Right now, I'm just going to, let's stick to the GUI so it makes sense. We can do GUI or CLI. We might do both. We might do all three. So right now, let's do GUI. All right, what we're going to do is use the GUI to take a look at the high CPU uses that that script just executed. So what we're going to do, I'm going to right click this start button and I'm going to open up task manager. All right, and if I'm going to rank this. I want to see the high CPU usage first, so I'm just going to click this until the highest is up top. And right now I can see that the highest is using about 98% of our CPU. And it's this program right here called Heavy Load. Heavy Load is, is the one that's using, that's causing the high CPU utilization, right? We can type that name in here, but before I type that name in here, let me just show you the other options, right? CLI, All right? We can go and get the same information from the command prompt. I'm going to open up the command prompt. And we do have to run this one as administrator. Yes, we want to run it as administrator. We're going to type this command. And this command is going to do the same thing that we just saw from the GUI. It's going to list out all of the processes that are running. And we can see the one that is running with the most CPU, which is this guy, heavy load, right? Don't worry about this. This is just the total of everything, the current total. But heavy load is the same culprit from before, right? We can do it another way. All right, there are three different options. We can use a third party tool. This third party tool is going to be using Sys Internal. Sys Internal is pretty cool. This is it right here on my desktop in the back. I'm going to double click that. And we are going to use this guy. We're going to just search for this Process Explorer. That is this program right here, Process Explorer 64. I'm going to double click it. And I'm going to prioritize this by CPU usage. Right, and if I scroll up to the top, I can see heavy load.exe. This is the same thing that Task Manager was showing us, but we're using a different program, a third party program. Same thing that the command prompt was showing us, same thing that Task Manager was showing us. So let's go ahead and tell them what the process was. It's called heavy load. Let's go ahead and score that and get our points. And we're going to go to the next section. All right, here. Now we're gonna terminate the offending process. There are a few ways we can do this, but we can only do it once. So I'm gonna do it from the command line, right? To terminate the process, or we can just, we'll just do it from right here, right? We have the task manager open to terminate this process. We would right click and hit end task. If I wanted to do that from uh, this sys internal application, I would right click this and hit kill process. If I wanted to do it from the command line, which I'll do that, I'm gonna hit CLI command prompt right because we just saw how to do it from you know i didn't do it but we we get the gist we just right click kill process over here you right click and task from the command prompt we could use this command right here this task list command and that will go ahead and kill the process that's just what i'm going to do i'm going to hit enter all right and the process has been killed here's the process number that was terminated 
we're going to go ahead and put that in here 4172 4172 boom oh now we're going to actually kill it right we, we were just getting the process name now let's go ahead and kill it right extra steps that we got to do in the command prompt if we would have did it from the gui it would have been pretty simple and straightforward all right so we just terminated that process we can go ahead and hit this next command to make sure to confirm that it was terminated boom it is terminated it's no longer running that is good all right we can come back over here we don't see that process running anymore our cpu usage has come down we can do that over here with sys internal we don't see that process any running anymore our cpu usage has come down sweet let's go to the next section now we're going to hash that file right we're going to hash the file associated with the road process all right let's go ahead and do this from let's try powershell now we're going to use powershell i'm going to minimize this i'm going to minimize this i'm going to minimize this i'm going to open up powershell but powershell needs to be run as administrator so i'm going to right click the one that we have open i'm going to select run as admin yes i want to run as admin we're going to start typing in these commands hit enter cool all right now this command is going to go ahead and search for that file it's going through all of our directories all of our folders to search for where the heavy load program is located we can see heavy load.exe is located in the program files jam software Let's give this a minute. This might actually be done, but I just wanna, don't wanna rush it. All right, yeah, I think this is done. We got what we need. I'm gonna, gonna control C that. We're gonna CD over to users, hit enter. We're going to go ahead and get a hash of that file, right? Because this is where it is, right? It's under this users directory, right? Before I even type this in, we can just do ls and we can see heavy load.exe is right here under the users directory. So we're going to go ahead and run this command to get a hash of that file. And that hash is going to be stored in the hash.txt. If I do ls, you can see that hash file right here, hash.txt. Cool. We got the hash. <clears throat> next section now we're going to analyze this malware right now we're going to analyze it we can use any of these processes any of these programs right here to analyze the malware let's use virus total right so we're going to go to virus total.com and we're going to input this hash inside of virus total.com i will go ahead and do that you will have to open up virus total on your own local browser so here we have virus total we're gonna to go to search. I'm gonna put that hash that we copy. And we're gonna ask virus total, hey, do you see anything malicious with this? All right, and it doesn't. It thinks it's a clean program. All right. Nobody, none of the vendors think that this is malicious. Fine. Okay, the question the online malware hash analysis provided. What result? It's not ransomware, it's not a key logger. It's unknown or it's not known to be malware. They don't know. All right, cool, next. All right, step five of the, of the playbook. We gotta determine the owner of this suspicious file. Let's go ahead and use PowerShell again since we have it open. Gonna clear my screen. Gonna go ahead and use this command to get the owner of the file. And it says that the owner is guess. Well, what do you know? Guest user is over here doing something malicious. Let's go ahead and score that. We're going to leave this open. We determine the owner. All right, now let's go to the next section. Now we're going to archive this file. How do we want to do it? Let's do it differently. Let's use the command prompt now. Okay, we're going to use the command prompt to go ahead and archive the file. It doesn't matter which process we use, right? They're all going to do the same thing just with within their individual tools. I'm going to clear my screen. I'm going to type this command in hit enter All right now it's archiving that file in other words it's going to store it in in a separate look it's tarring it up it's going to store it in a zip file uh it says remove leading drive letters from members name let's see if it's stored so it should be tarring up this file under our c drive 
Let's see if it actually did it. Yep, it did. All right, heavy load dot zip. All right, so it did zip it up. All right, so what this tar command is doing is creating the zip file, right? It's creating the zip file and it is storing the exe and the text file, right? The heavy load dot exe and the text file inside of this zip. Cool. It did do it. All right, now let's go to the next section. All right, now we're going to copy this zip file over to another location. Let's use uh, Netcat. Well, let's use WinSCP. Right, I don't think we've ever used WinSCP yet. So we're gonna go ahead and use WinSCP. This is a program we can use to copy files to different systems remotely, right? It's a Windows program. All right, so what we need here is the IP address we wanna copy the file over to. We want the port number. We want the account of that system we wanna copy the files over to, right? The account on this system, right? The account is gonna be root. And the password is going to be password. So what are we doing? Here's our computer right now. This is PC 10. We have the malware zipped up. We want to copy it over to dot 66, right? So that's what we're going to do using port 22 on dot 66. There's a user called roots, right? And this is the root password. If we want to copy things over here, we need to copy it on a user account that exists on that system. So that is what we are doing right now. So go ahead and select. Oh, we have to select SCP here though. All right, we have to select SCP. Cool, we're gonna log in. Yes, we trust that computer. All right, now where do they want us to put it? Well, first of all, let's go up a directory. We're gonna, on this left side, we're gonna go up, up to the C drive, and we have to find the zip file. Where do we store the zip file at? I think it was under C users. Let's go up again. And here it is, here's the zip file. So we just have to copy it over here. I just wanna make sure we copy it over to the right location. Look, we're just gonna drag it over and select okay. So we're dragging it over. Cool, now let's go over here and switch over to Kali. We dragged it over to our system, to the Kali machine, cause we can do more testing over here, All right? Kali is gonna be our test bed. So let's see if it actually successfully copied over. We're gonna open up the terminal, type in ls. We see the heavy load uh, zip file here. We're going to unzip it with the T switch. Hit LS. And do we have to unzip it again? I see, but it didn't. Uh, where did it unzip it to? Uh, testing users, LS, no error detected in a compressed file. Okay, we're, it was just a test. All right. Let's go ahead and score that. Whoops. Yeah, let's go ahead and unzip it, unzip it. All right. Where is it unzipping it to, though? I uh, don't see it. Something's wrong with that zip file. It's saying the file is not found. It should find it. It's right here. Well, we're not, I don't think we're supposed to unzip it, unzip it, but for some reason it's not detecting our file. Where does it want the file to be? Oh, we have it in the wrong folder. We got to put it in the quarantine folder. All right, so let's see. If we don't have a quarantine folder here, so we're just going to make that directory. I don't see quarantine here. So I'm going to make quarantine, make their quarantine. Then I'm going to move the heavy load that zip to the quarantine folder. And then we're going to try to score that again. All right, cool. Now it's there. So now we see the quarantine folder. We had to, we had to put the, the, the zip file in this folder. We created it with the make dir command and we moved it over. All right, sweet. We're going to go back to PC 10. And we're going to go to the next section. Now we're going to remove the suspicious file. We're on step eight. Now we got to remove it. Let's go ahead and do it from, let's do it from the GUI this time. All right. So we're going to open up the file explorer. We're going to go to the C drive. We're going to go to, I believe it was under users. 
and here it is. So we're gonna right click this and delete it. Boom, it's gone. We're gonna right click on this hash and we're gonna delete it. Boom, it's gone. Now we're gonna go to the recycling bin and make sure it's gone gone, right? Cause it's still here. So just highlight everything and delete. Now it is completely gone, right? We can score that and make sure we get our points. It says the heavy load zip file was still, it was found. Where is it found at though? All right, that's the case. Let's do it with, with another option to make sure it's actually gone. Let's use the command prompt. All right, we're gonna do it again with the command prompt. We're gonna type this command in. Oh, it was still under the C drive. We're gonna type, let's go to the C drive, CD, C, colon, forward slash. We're gonna type dir to make sure that it's not there. I don't see it anymore. We're gonna make sure it's not under the users folder, which we already deleted, it's not there. Okay, cool, that's what we were missing. We were missing it under the C drive. All right, now it's completely gone. All right, see how we use two different options? We use the GUI and the command prompt to make sure that, it's, that this file was actually gone. Now we have to create the report. The report is already created for us, right? The report would be the last thing that you do is type up the report of everything that you just did, your after action report. After action report is gonna detail the steps you took. It's also going to detail the summary. It's going to detail if you could have done things better, if things were done according to the plan, if the plan wasn't sufficient enough to clean this in a timely manner. The after action report is all about what you did. Could you have done things better? Are you going to keep doing it the same way because it was just enough? It was effective enough, right? We're going to detail everything that just happened in our after action report. All right, next, All right? And Keep in mind, after action report is also known as lessons learned or post-mortem report, right? Lessons learned or post-mortem report. All right, next, which of the following playbooks tasks must occur before the others? Uh, remove the suspicious valve, copy the zip. Determine, perform it up. We gotta, we gotta figure out the name of the program first. What asset defines the steps needed to respond to a security incident such as specific roles, processes, and procedures that security staff must follow? That is our playbook. Right, a playbook is often considered what type of security control? Responsive. Which security solution scans security and threat intelligence data collect from multiple sources within the enterprise, then analyzes it. That is gonna be a SOAR tool, right? That playbook that we just went through, we can automate all of that with a SOAR tool. We can automate all of that with a SOAR tool. Which of the following are two statements in regards to playbook? A playbook is designed to automate. No, that's a sword tool. The most effective incident response playbook are tailored to an organization's specific security needs, possibly. Generally, a playbook is used by a person and a runbook is used by a sword. Yes, when creating an incident response playbook, or an organization should ensure they have the right level of detail in that. Uh, what did we do wrong? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought I selected this. When creating an incident response playbook, organizations should ensure they have the right level of detail and that all necessary stakeholders are involved. Boom. There we go. Y'all, simple. Playbooks are pretty simple. Step-by-step -step processes. Fortunately, when you get into your first job as a SOC analyst tier one, you won't be expected to know the steps for everything, right? You're not expected to know how to handle a phishing attack. You're not expected to learn, learn know f from the top of your memory how to handle high CPU utilization. You're not from memory expected to know how to handle a Trojan, right? Because it's gonna be different per organization. That's why they have playbooks to take you through that step-by-step -step process. You have the playbook in front of you, you know what to do. Obviously the playbooks are living documents. That means they're gonna be constantly changing, constantly being updated because attacks are changing, defensive controls are changing, and analysts are changing. All right, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for future content. Peace. See you later.